Well, what are some trends that you're seeing in teens? Where where do things appear to be going with them, their mental space? One of the things that I'm very hopeful about is that I'm seeing a lot more openness to therapy. Even not long ago when I was in training, when I was going through my graduate program, we were talking about the stigma of mental health. And that's still there. And certain disorders certainly carry more stigma than others. But what I'm seeing generally, just by my own observation, is that children, teens, and and young parents are much more open to seeking help, to recognizing when they or their children need help, and just being open to change, really. Being able to say this is something that's going on that we could benefit from from additional support from. So I see that happening. I see a lot of conversation between my, not between my clients, but between my clients and their friends about, oh yeah, I went to see my therapist. What did your therapist have to say about that? Or, you know, and so they'll, they'll talk openly about that, which I, which I think is really healthy that we're taking some of that stigma away. And I truly believe that, that children and and teens, this, this cohort is going to really redefine how we think about mental health even down to how we diagnose and, and think about disorders like autism or ADHD and, and things that fall under that neurodivergence, how we talk about these things, how we identify these things, all, all of that. So I see that really changing. And at the same time, I see a lot of clients who are still suffering with a lot of anxiety and depression and with that, some, some risky behaviors, but I'm, I'm still very hopeful. Okay. Well, very good. Are there, are there any teen issues that you see that are really problematic? You know, like if a teen's doing self-harm, cutting, is that is that like a really bad sign? You know, what things are within the realm of healthy and which things are definitely going outside of it and need to be addressed? It's a great question. And also, unfortunately, a conversation that happens far too often. Self-harm is more than what we generally think of when like we're thinking about what is portrayed in the media what we see in tv shows or movies is um cutting generally that's not all it is self-harm can be not taking care of yourself physically not sleeping when you need to not showering it can be abusing substances or more serious substances it can be cutting yourself off from your friends so self-harm is a larger umbrella term and everything is really on a spectrum here in terms of how concerned I would be uh, with any of those behaviors, though, I'm still concerned. And we're having a conversation about safety and, and increasing engagement with, uh, we call it activities of daily living. And so like taking care of like feeding yourself well and sleeping and showering and doing all those kinds of things. But I, I always worry whenever there's a self-harm component, because whether it's what we call superficial self-harm, which is not really breaking the skin if they're engaging in some cutting behaviors to more serious where you might even need stitches. I'm always worried about that. But the conversation is a little bit different in terms of what we call safety planning. What is more normal and what can be perceived as self-harm is substance use in that in this age group, especially older adolescents, there is a lot of experimentation, which is age appropriate and age typical. But it all comes down to how often, what kind of substances are you doing? Like if if you're of that age where you can drive, then are you are you trying to drive while under the influence? Who are you doing this with? Where are you? Who are you talking to? Are you able to talk about this with your parents? And so safety is still a big concern. But that's the world where it's a little bit more developmentally typical and, and is also part of identity development, that whole process as well.